Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamental concepts of software testing, helping you understand more detail about the same. Uh, as a part of this particular tutorial, we are in chapter three right now, talking about the test types and the various test levels and uh, continuing ahead with our first segment that is 3.1, the functional test levels. And uh, today we'll be talking about the next core functional level that is integration testing. To talk about integration testing, that's the most important thing to understand what happened in the previous level because until unless unit testing is performed and the test passes with the required level of coverage achieved on the functionality or the code, we cannot move to the integration test level. Now, what exactly that means? For example, if a developer has written a set of program, that program has to be tested in a desired manner with the number of possibilities what a user can interact with that program with. For example, if there's a condition which says there is an input of a variable, a kind of number, and there's a check on the condition if that is greater than a particular number, maybe for example, greater than 10. Now that condition can either be true or false. Now either of that case is what we need to check in order to say that unit is completely tested or 100% coverage has been achieved, right? Now that point satisfies the completion of the unit testing and once unit testing is completed, we switch to integration or we start or kick off with integration testing. Now, is integration testing limited to a particular unit? No. Multiple units put together is called as integration. But before that, we talk about what exactly it takes to kick off with the integration, let's have a quick definition to what is integration testing. Now, integration testing can be defined as the communication interfaces or kind of data flow between two or more modules. Now, when you say two or more modules, that means at least two different modules are required to kick off with integration testing between them. Now, the word says data flow. If I'm trying to do something on the module one and move to module two, the module two should know what I have entered in module one and what basis do I come to module two. For a simple example, when I'm trying to make transfer of money from one bank account to another bank account, it's all about integration. If there is no integration established, you cannot transfer money from one account to another account. Right. Similarly, when I'm trying to send a simple text message from one cell phone to another cell phone, there must be some kind of interface built so that this communication can go from one module to another module. The other person should receive what you did in the module one and should be able to read your message in their devices. Similarly, take any other example, even like, you know, on the same application, if you don't talk about two different applications, on the same application, when I go to a particular application like booking.com or any other thing where you book the flights or train tickets or bus tickets, etc., and you try to, you know, search a based on a criteria like from city to city, the date of travel, etc., and click on search, the next page shows you the list of available options based on your criteria. If in case that does not show the list of options based on your criteria, that is also an interface issue or integration failure because the module one information should be carried forward to the module two and accordingly displaying you the output. Now integration testing is all about that. It's just not limited to connecting two different parts of the application or two different page of the application or two different modules in simple terms. It's more than that, which is just not linking it. It's more about integrating, having the data flowing between two or more modules. Further to add on that, we have two types of integration testing. We have incremental integration testing and non-incremental integration testing, where incremental integration testing is used when the modules are in a particular sequence. For example, if I'm talking about booking a flight or withdrawing money from an ATM machine, they have the set of modules in a particular sequence. That means I cannot jump directly from module one to module four. There's a sequence defined. That means I need to go from one, two, three, four, five, six in order to complete a transaction. 
there's no no way possible that person can jump from module one to module five directly. You have to flow this you know flow uh, in order to complete your transaction. On the other hand, if I talk about different applications than this, where we don't have a flow involved. For example, if I'm talking about Google, every single search item is a direct link and I can jump from anywhere to anywhere. Same way if I'm talking about LinkedIn, I'm talking about Facebook, I'm talking about any such website which has direct hyperlinks on the homepage itself and it does not has a kind of you know sequence of modules. I can jump from, for example, Gmail, I can jump from sent items to trash, trash to bin, bin to uh, kind of drafts, drafts to inbox, inbox to trash again. Is There's no limitation, there's no sequence defined there. You can access anything at any point of time, irrespective of where you are. And such things, such applications when tested, we call it as non-incremental integration testing because there's no increment there. You can get even four and nine to start with the integration. But in the case of incremental, I need the right sequence like four or five, or maybe two, three, right, in order to do that. Now, other ways, uh, when we talk about the approaches to do this integration testing, we have TDA, BUA, and BBA, which means top-down approach, BUA means bottom-up approach, and BBA stands for Big Bang Approach. Now, of course, top-down and bottom-up are the two different approaches used for incremental testing. That means one, two, three, four, five is my top-down approach, and BUA means five, four, three, two, one. So if the application allows you to come back in the same sequence, like back, 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 you can use or call that approach as bottom up approach. And if you're going in a further direction that is one, two, three, four, five, six, you call it as top down approach. But Big Bang, just like Big Bang Theory, everything is scattered but connected to each other, right? So for the non-incremental, we call that approach as Big Bang approach. Also to kind of like understand further when it comes to integration testing, it is just not uh, limited to particular component. So the more we have the integrations being done, it's just not limited to two modules as well. We say that it is between two or more modules. The greater the number of modules getting integrated, the complications will kick off. And that's the way we talk about the greater the scope of integration, the more difficult it becomes to isolate defects to a specific component or a system which may increase the risk. So we should not underestimate that when it comes to our integration testing, initially when you start with limited number of modules, uh, integrating them, integration testing is being performed, you try to target a slightly deeper dive to see if you can really figure out any defects. It's not just limited to setting up the integrations. You also look forward to have any specific defects which are related to interfaces, communication between these modules can be identified or not. So being a tester, we are giving you again some kind of input here that integration testing should lead to identification of defects much earlier in the integration phases. Uh, the more later you try to look for a defect, it could be complicated. Even if you can find a failure when you are trying to interact with a system, you may not be able to get to the root cause immediately. It will, it will take some time to deep dive and understand where we exactly went wrong and how exactly we have the outcome of it, right? So these are all things which we wanted to convey you, but there will be a second part of our integration testing where we'll also be talking about something called as component integration testing and system integration testing. So stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.